Yes. Now let me introduce you to somebody who's standing by to talk to us. Uh, he currently serves as director of the Center for Gene Therapy at the Research Institute at Nationwide Children's Hospital and holds professorships in neurology, pediatrics, pathology, physiology, and cell biology at The Ohio State University. He directs the neuromuscular uh, research program at Nationwide Children's Hospital, and he's worked in the lab using experimental models of muscular dystrophy and at the bedside participating in clinical trials. He was a founding member of a study group known as the Clinical Investigation of Duchenne Dystrophy that defined testing methods for clinical trials in boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, he's the first to perform gene therapy for DMD, also started a gene therapy study demonstrating success for the first time. His lab also recently demonstrated vascular delivery by RAAV of muscular dystrophy genes to the limbs of mice and non-human primates that will be moving toward clinical trials to make a difference in the lives of patients with devastating disease of muscle. He uh, has received the highest honor that MDA bestows on physicians and scientists for contributions to muscular dystrophy research, the Scientific Achievement Award. He received honorary lifetime membership in the American Association of Neuromuscular Disease and Electromyography for outstanding contributions to the field of muscular dystrophy. And he is recognized by the American Academy of Neurology for clinical and scientific contributions to the muscular dystrophy field. He was presented the Distinguished Scholar Award by the president of the Ohio State University last year. He is one of the great scientists that we fund as part of Jesse's journey. And would you uh, say hello to Dr. Jerry Mendel? Well, thank you very much. Rick and I have worked on uh, this presentation method, and I think it will be successful. And I look
highlighted as a supporter for all of these in every one of these publications. So I feel good about that and appreciate the support. Um, the goal of the, when I put in the grant to Jesse's journey, we were uh, trying to move from directly injecting the muscle uh, with the gene to delivering the gene to the circulation. And that is a very big item because now we've proven basically, um, at least in part, I say in part, that we can, we can inject the gene directly in the muscle, but we need to deliver it through the circulation in order for it to reach as uh, many muscles as possible to, um, uh, to be really successful in changing the, the life course of patients with muscular dystrophy. So I'm going to present um, where we are in this study that uh, we've worked very hard on for the last several years. And on this slide, it just uh, uh, it, it summarizes what we've done in the mouse. Uh, we were able to take the gene, that little cartoon there actually is a picture of the gene um, with a what we call a muscle-specific promoter. And the graph there that you can see on the X and Y axis, um, we can uh, take the gene and and correct the defect. The blue line is the defect in the mouth, and the um, and the uh, red the red line is the correction. And actually, we can improve it back to normal, which is the black line. So this was when we when we inject the gene through the circulation in the mouth, we can correct it completely. And I have a little picture over here on the right, which is kind of gross. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it shows the artery that we inject. And, um, and we put a catheter in that artery and thread it down and, um, and inject the gene through that artery. And that's basically how we're going to do a clinical trial at some point in the future. <clears throat> and I'll explain that more in a few minutes. But that was one major step we accomplished on the Jesse's Journey grant. The second part of it was uh, once it's one thing to do something in the mouth, it's more important do it in the monkey because uh, the monkey circulation is more like patient circulation and this is a very challenging uh, approach but one that, that has to be done and I show again here a little cartoon of the gene that we put in. In the monkey, in, in the, the mouse has muscular dystrophy so when we correct it in the mouse we can see the correction. We don't have any monkeys that have muscular dystrophy but we can put a little uh, flag uh, on the on the gene, and that flag is reflected in that uh, little box there that this, that shows uh, an amino acid sequence labeled DYK DDDDK, and that flag allows us to see wherever we put the gene in the circulation, and we have criteria that have been set up for successful delivery. Um, which show on the bottom there, but this is basically how we do it. We, we uh, thread the, the, the catheter through the femoral artery in the monkey, and we can target various specific uh, uh, muscles in the, in the leg of the monkey. One is the sural artery, and that goes to supply the, the gastroc muscle or the posterior calf muscle, which is also shown there on the right. And when we do that, um, we've done this now, and this is an incredibly uh, challenging study, but we, what we, we have a target that we want to um, increase gene expression to the 30 to 40 percent level, um, and we have reason for that. We think that if we correct it to that level, we can make a clinically meaningful difference. And we have done, um, one of the things, we've done 54 monkeys now, which is quite a quite a large task, and in each monkey that we do, we count 20,000 muscle fibers, so this is a very large study, very time consuming, and that's just to give you an example of the analysis, but these are the findings here, the green fibers and, and the red ones over on the right show that we achieve very good gene expression using this method, and this bodes well uh, for future success for vascular delivery of the gene. Um, one of the things that we've looked at is whether, um, it, whether when we uh, inject the gene, and there's relevance to this that I'll show in a minute, some kids have pre-existing immunity, uh, either to the gene that we put in or to the virus. If there's no pre-existing immunity um, uh, at the three months 
one time point, as this little uh, table shows, we can get very good gene expression. So if they don't have, uh, and we can check for pre, we've learned how to do this incidentally through the, through the clinical trial that we did. But uh, when, when, the, when the monkeys have pre-existing immunity to the virus, and we can program that, um, we get very poor gene expression. But when we use prednisone, which most of the kids are on, um, we were quite pleased to find out that if, even if in the face of pre-existing immunity, if we did a six-month, uh, if we did a six-month trial and the, and the monkeys were on prednisone, we we really got very good gene expression. And um, and there's a, and with another form of immunotherapy that's even a little more aggressive, where we use prednisone, mycophenolate, and tacrolimus, we can get good gene expression. Now, the reason that this 